So, like in introduction, in recent years, management, management of the staphylo injuries has been at the front, at the front, of front, forefront uh, of debates. Advancing in research stopping techniques have redefined major anatomical findings and operative approach. For that reason, there is better anatomical comprehension. And today we talk about the, com the scaphalonate uh, complex. The scaphalonate ligament complex, complex uh, has three elements. The first element is the intrinsic, intrinsic portion of the scaphalonate. And it has three segments, the dorsal, volar, and proximal segment. The dorsal segment uh, is, a, is biomechanically the most important. The second element is the main extrinsic uh, ligament, uh, such as uh, the radius uh, capital ligament, long radial lunate and short lunate ligaments, and uh, the dorsal radiocarpal and dorsal intercarpal ligaments. The third element of this complex is the dorsal capsule scaphalonate septum. This structure joins the dorsal capsule uh, with the dorsal portion of the scaphalonate, as we can see in this image, and we can see in the cadaveric specimen. These three structures are, are closely interlinked and appear to be the key of the scaphalonate stability. For that reason, in 2011, the Dr. Christophe Matula proposed this uh, new technique. And the main, main uh, uh, goal of this technique is repair of, is the, is repair of the uh, DCSS or the dorsal scaphalonate set. And in this technique, they, they use the PDS suture, needle number 21, and consists in the first step, you, uh, you first suture pass through the dorsal capsule and then uh, through the uh, dorsal scapulonate ligament here in the, luna, in the lunar side. And this suture pass from the right carpal joint to mid carpal joint. The second step is the same way like the, the step one, uh, but in the scaphoid side. The main advantage of this procedure is you preserve the dorsal capsule and the muscle and tendon response to trauma in the dorsal and border soap of the scaphalonate exert a protective, a protective effect against the scaphalonate dissociation. For that reason, it is very important to protect the dorsal uh, capsule. Finally, we perform the knots. The first knot has been tied between the distal sutures, as we can see in this image. And then the first knot enter in the mid carpal space. Then uh, we the second knot tie between the two proximal ends and introduce in the three four point incision. The reported thirty six patient and the mean delay from trauma to surgery was ninety point uh, eight months. The dash score uh, was from thirty four to ninety point five. All the patients return to work an average time of the nine weeks, and the seven professional athletes continue practicing, practicing at the same level as before the injury. Only six patients had occasionally slightly pain, slightly pain. This is the EWAS classification, and my presentation focuses in EWAS 3, A, B, and C. So I show you some cases about this technique. Uh, this is the first case, a male, 30 years old, suffered a wrist trauma. He had a pain in the dorsal of the wrist. During the clinical examination, we found Watson sign positive. He performed a physical therapy for two months. However, the pain continues. This is the MRI of this patient. We, we can see the partial scaphalonic tear. And we propose that this arthroscopic dorsal repair. Uh, firstly, we evaluated the scaphalonate uh, ligament, and uh, in this patient, the proof entered between the scaphalonate ligament in the dorsal segments. For that reason, we classified this patient in EWAS 3A. After that, we started to perform the arthroscopic dorsal repair. We passed the sutures through the dorsal capsule and then 
through the portion, the dorsal portion of the scapulonate, as we can see in the video. We use only PDS sutures and needle number 21. And, they, and after that, we retrieve the sutures in the mid carpal space. And uh, we perform the knots. The first knot is tied between the distal ends of the sutures, as we can see in the video. This is the first knot, and the first knot enter in the mid carpal space. So this is the first knot, enter in the mid carpal space. And we can see the knot in the mid carpal space. So after that, we perform the second knot between the proximal ends of the sutures. And finally, the patient was immobilized with a short cast for six weeks. And after that, he started the physical therapy. This is the follow-up of the patient at three months. Uh, she had full range of motion without pain. This is the video of the patient. And he return to work as before the injury. So this is another case, a female, 50 years old, she performed a manual work, had, a, had pain in the dorsal of the wrist for nine months. Uh, in the clinical examination, we found what's signed, and she performed physical therapy for three, three months. But nevertheless, the pain continues. So I propose, I propose in this case, the same technique, uh, first of all, we evaluated the scaphalonic ligament. Uh, as we can see, the proof entered between the scaphalonic ligaments, but in the dorsal side, so we classify, classify this patient in was 3 a We perform the same, the same uh, repair, and this is the final follow-up at four months. She, she had full range of motion. She, she had... Uh, she, she didn't have uh, any pain, and she returned to work. So there are some paper about this technique. In 2018, uh, they reported 15 patients, and the meaning and the mean follow-up period was 20 months. The scaphalonate stability was classified in was three. Activity pain decreased for, from 7.8 7 preoperatively. Pre Two to four, 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 four postoperatively. At the final follow up, range of motion, inflection, extension, and the grip strength were estimated at 8.87 and 91% compared with contralateral side. Our experience we have four patients, uh, all of them uh, return to work, all of them uh, have full range of motion, and the dash score was lower. To sum up, uh, the scaffold lunate ligament, the extrinsic ligaments, mainly the, the dorsal intercarpal ligaments, and DCSS are the key of the stability in the scaffold lunate interval. The arthroscopic, uh, the wrist arthroscopic allows pre precise diagnosis and treatment at the same time. The arthroscopic techniques are the least innovative surgical techniques for scaphalonate ligaments. For that reason, we preserve proprioception on the dorsal side, and this playing an important role in the stabilizing, stabilizing the scaphalonate space. Thank you.